is our peace. Jesus is our peace. I was thinking about my younger days for my career. I worked in a, a small 300-bed hospital in East Harlem. I'm not going to say the name of it. It was under like the 123rd Street, like the L train elevated station. And the primary, the primarily group of people that we had there were people who, were, who had anxiety, who had mental disorders, and people who had depression. And we gave so many anti-anxiety meds, so many um, meds for depression. But the Lord began to speak to me, you're only treating the symptoms. You're not treating the disease. Most of the people, they came in and out of the hospital. They would feel peace for a little while, but when the medication wore off, they began to go into their own world, their own system. And I began to think of my life, how futile is the works of man when we need the power of God? How futile are the works of man when we need the power of God because they needed Jesus. But sometimes we live in a life where we try to take the easier road. It's easier to just to say it's something that's natural. Easy to say that it's just something that's an imbalance of neurotransmitters. But it takes real courage to say this is spiritual warfare. I have seen so many people that have been under depression and depression and fear. And when they came to Jesus, it was broken. They didn't need the anti-anxiety meds anymore. They didn't need the antipsychotics anymore. And people who used to be filled with anxiety and fear, they were filled with joy. They would be praising God the loudest than anybody in the congregation. People say, what's, what's wrong with these people? They keep praising God so much because God had broken their season of oppression. God had broken their, their season of fear. And God had come into their lives and done something what man couldn't do. God brought peace. Jesus, he is our peace. He is our peace. No matter what you're going through this morning, no matter what trial or difficulty, Jesus is our peace. No matter what things you go through, Jesus is our peace. And I begin to realize this even in greater detail. I always talk about dreams and visions that I had, but I was usually younger when I had those dreams and visions. But I had a vision two days ago, and my hair was like white. And I was in the South Bronx where I used to work in St. Barnabas Hospital. I was a pharmacy intern. And that area was very rough. They had a delineation between the South Bronx and uh, Little, uh, Little Italy, was right, in that, right in that area, uh, Arthur Avenue was right not that far from the hospital. And I had a dream, and I saw myself in the same area again, hair white, and the area was dilapidated. And I know they built a lot of things up around the Bronx in the area, but I'm saying, how did they get dilapidated? I'm thinking maybe that, you know, the presence of God <laughs> was not in this place and people began to turn their hearts away from them. Things begin to change. So it's very important to be obedient to God, to, to rest in his goodness, so you'll be able to, to, to get on the, up, up, be able to overcome in his blessing. And I was down there, and there were two young men and they were trying to accost me and trying to, to rob me. And I began to get a word of knowledge from God. And I lifted up both my hands. And I began to pray to them in the name of Jesus. I said, your oppression is broken. Your fear is broken. The iniquity is broken. And it is broken. It is broken. And they fell out on the ground. And I woke up. This is God's dream for your life. This is God's dream for boldness, for boldness, for boldness that overcomes fear, for boldness for God's kingdom. Doesn't matter who you think you are, the natural, God is greater. God will use you. God will pour out life, wisdom, strength, holiness inside of your body. He will move you. He will anoint you. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter how young you are. You serve a God who is strong and mighty, a God who raises the dead, a God who heals.
heals the sick, a God who makes the blind see, and the deaf hear, and the lame walk. He's still doing it. 2,000 years of chef gone by, and he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord brought me to the realization that peace is not something we have to work for. It's in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our peace. We're going to be primarily looking in the, the book of Hebrews because the Lord gave me five points about this that really, that really began to bless me. And even before I begin the message, I just want to give a praise report. One of my uh, co-workers, a lady I was talking about before, but she was singing. Uh, we had the prayer session in the, in the conference room. I come a little like a half an hour early, as I said before, and we have a little bit of prayer, and this woman began to start singing. And I'm saying, wow, I didn't even know she was a believer. But we talked. She used to sing in a choir at home in California. The family moved, and her parents looking for a church. And last Sunday, they came here. I didn't, I, I didn't even know it because I came in, and she said, oh, guess what? My parents went to your church. I said, wow, they, they went. Yeah, they really liked the service. They really enjoyed it. I said, I don't know if she's gonna show up, uh, they're going to show up this week, or, but they really liked the service. They really enjoyed it, and they, they're really been blessed by it. And even simple things, I'm going to tell you something that's so, that's so wild, that they worked on the weekend. And on Sunday, they say, you know something, I'm a little curious. I want to see one of the messages from Abundant Grace. They put on YouTube and they listen to one of the messages that I preached at work. And these things are something that I never thought could happen. Just telling you it takes a, just a little courage. Step out, faith. And as you begin to step out into the waters, God begins to move you more in more territory, in more territory. And you begin to start doing things that you think you cannot do because God is strengthening you. He's empowering you. He's building your faith in every little step that you take. It's a big step because it begins to allow him to move through you in a way that you never thought possible. Never thought possible. So Jesus is our peace. I'm going to begin reading with the book of Hebrews, uh, beginning with chapter 7, verses 14 through 28, that Jesus, he is our peace. Beginning with verse number 14. It says, For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, who has come not according to the law of fleshly commandment, but according to the power of endless life. For he testifies, you are our priests forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For on one hand, there is sin annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and, and, and its unprofitableness. For the, Lord made no, for the Lord made nothing perfect. The Lord began to show me People are depending upon the law. They're depending upon, I have one guy I talked to, the most thing he depended upon was the Ten Commandments, that if he followed those things, he would be all right and he would go to heaven. No one who has ever lived in this flesh has, has fulfilled each and every single commandment. We have broken at least one of them in our lives. And that's why we're in a season of law. If I can do this, if I can do that, if I can live in, in this situation by doing good work, somehow I can go to heaven. It doesn't matter if I'm a, of the Hindu faith or a Buddhist or any kind of different philosophy. Even if I'm an atheist and I try to be a good person, I can still go to heaven. But I'm here to say there's only one way to eternal life. It's through the nail-scarred hands of a king 2,000 years ago who hung on Calvary's cross, who shed his blood, who gave his life that we may have life that is eternal. It it is not a religious system. It is not a religious formula. It is not a religious activity. It is believing in the blood and the power and the resurrection of Christ Jesus that has torn, torn away, torn away, broken away sin. The veil is torn from the top to the bottom to this morning, and you have direct entrance into the house and into the presence of your God. 
So Jesus, he was a priest in the order of Melchizedek forever. And in verse 22, it says, by so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he's able, he able to save to the other most. Those who come to God through him since he always lives to make his intercession. Verse number 26 says, for such a high priest was fitting for us. He who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to go offer up sacrifices for his own sins and then for the people's. But he did not, he put, for he did once and for all when he offered up himself. For the law and the prophets and the high priests have weakness. But the word of an oath which came after the law appoints the son who has been perfected forever. We have peace because he is our high priest. He is our intercessor. He is the one that understands our weakness in our flesh, understands for he suffered all things as unto men. He was tempted. He was tried. But yet in every temptation, every trial, he was victorious. And I'm saying this morning, you are victorious. If you believe in Jesus, if you believe in him being your high priest, if you believe he's a mediator of a new and better covenant, if you believe his blood still has the power to cleanse, if you believe in the anointing of God flowing through those people who believe in his name, if you believe in a power of the blood of Jesus Christ it overcomes every demon overcomes every principality overcomes every power overcomes every sickness overcomes every disease overcomes every weakness he is our high priest he is our mediator Hebrews chapter 8 verses 1 through 13 It is so funny that when I first started preaching, I thought I would be on the intellectual vein. <laughs> I thought I would be somebody who would just read and calmly preach the word because that is my natural personality, calmness. Even people that the, the job, they say, no, it's so quiet, but when you start praying, it's that wild, it's like a different person. It's like a different person. It is a different person. It's a, it's a spirit man in me born again. It is the spirit speaking through me. It is not your flesh. It is the spirit of God that uses you. God doesn't matter how quiet you are, how timid you may be, how weak you may think you are. You have strength in him. You can change this world. You can change your neighborhood. You can change your family by releasing the gospel of Jesus Christ that they may be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. There's no way, no way anything that faces you can overcome the blood, the power, the anointing, the, the gift of Jesus Christ that is in you shall overcome every obstacle and trial that you face. So in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 to 13, the Lord showed me that Jesus is our peace because he's a mediator of a new and everlasting covenant. As I said on my job, we have so many different religious belief systems. We have from atheist to agnostic, we have people of the Islamic faith, of Hindu origin. We have people from every different religious background. But all these things are based upon what can I do, not what God has done. And that's a, a formula which I begin to share the truth with them. You know something? They're not really angry. They see that I believe this sincerely from my heart. It's not about me trying to indoctrinate some people into my ways or my thought system. It's about me desiring that people hear the truth because they will die one day and they will give an account for their life. And woe unto me if I don't speak the truth of God to them. Woe unto me. It doesn't matter, as I said about your personality, but sometimes I feel a compulsion that God says you must speak the truth. You must tell people about my son. You must tell people about my kingdom. 
It doesn't matter how many difficulties you may have to suffer or rejections. It's about them hearing the word of truth from somewhere, somehow, that we must transcend this cultural Christianity and transcend this cultural belief system that all four roads work to God. There is only one way. It is through the nail-scarred hands of a king that has redeemed us from our sin. Hebrews chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. And now this main point of, the, of things we are saying, we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of, of the majesty in heaven, a minister of the true, of, of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle, for he said, See that you all, that see that you make all things according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, in such as he is a mediator of a better covenant, which is established on better promises. We have a new mediator, a mediator who does not have to go for the forgiveness of his sins, to intercede for us, a mediator who is spotless, who had not one iniquity, who sinned not one single time. We have a mediator who goes into the holy of holies, not with the blood of bulls or the blood of goats, but the, not the blood of lamb, but with his own precious blood. He goes as a mediator, and he holds up his nail-scarred hands, and he says, they are my children, they are free. They are no longer on the bondage. They are no longer on the fear. They are no longer underneath the authority of the devil, but they have a new kingdom, a new righteousness, a new holiness, a new peace, and a new joy. I declare this morning that all the saints of God open their ears and their eyes and they may see spiritually the victory that has been won by Christ Jesus, our King. He has triumphed over principalities, over powers, over forces, of wickedness in high places. He has torn down strongholds. He has broken walls. He has established his kingdom in the midst of the praises of his body. For in verse 7, for, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no place that had been sought for a second. Because finding out fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. And I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after all these days. Says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and I will write them on their heart. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none of his brothers, none, his, none, none his brothers, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. In their sins and their lordless deeds I will remember no more. And that he says, a new covenant. He made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish. We have a new everlasting covenant that is in Jesus Christ. We have peace with him now because of his blood. And the Lord began to talk to me. I didn't even realize this is Yom Kippur. And this message came. I didn't even know that Yom Kippur was coming. That many people are trying to atone for their own sins with the sacrifices of animals, with the sacrifices of things that Jesus already took care of. You don't have to sacrifice an animal. You don't have to sacrifice anything. He was the sacrifice. His blood was the payment. His blood was the payment. 
His blood was the payment. His blood was the payment. His blood was the payment that took away every sin, every sin in your life, past, present, and future. If you believe in Jesus Christ that has been washed, you have been cleansed, you are holy, you are separated from this world, you are no longer underneath the king of this world, you are no longer underneath any authority, any principality, any power. Nothing overcomes the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing overcomes the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing overcomes the washing, the cleansing, the empowering, the anointing that comes from being underneath the blood of Jesus Christ. You begin to be bold and you begin to move mountains and tear down strongholds and break down walls and begin to move in power and authority that comes from heaven because his blood is over you and over your life and over your family and over your home, over the next generation, over from generation to generation. The blood of Jesus has made us bold, made us whole, made us healed, made us redeemed, made the saints and sons and daughters of the living God. So we have a mediator, a new and everlasting covenant. The Lord Jesus Christ showed me the point number three that he is our peace because he is our perfect sacrifice. He is our perfect sacrifice. I know that this message in the eyes of men of religion seems strange because you come to the realization at a point that you can do nothing except for rely upon him. And most people that I talk to, they want to do something. They want to somehow earn it. I talked to one person about the Lord, and he said, you know, that's too easy. That's too easy. You know something, you just... Believe in the blood that Jesus died for your sins and you're automatically changing your save. You know, what about doing good works? What about, I've been to say, we're going to talk to them and say, no, it's not about doing good works. It's about the relationship that you have with Christ Jesus. The good works flow forth for us as fruit that comes forth in the relationship. It's not about the good works that, that sanctifies us. And so many people are trying to find a way to get to God by earning it. You can't earn it. You have to receive it. That's the biggest lesson I learned in my life. You can't earn it. That if you're God's son this morning, no matter what, it's been in your past. If you're God's daughter, no matter what, it's been in your past. No matter what is behind you, God is before you. Your past iniquity is gone. You're no longer a slave to sin, but you are underneath the righteousness of Christ Jesus. You have become something that is new. Way back in the Garden of Eden, the Lord Jesus Christ, he said in a prophecy that in Genesis 3.15 it says that the Lord would put enmity between the seed of the woman and the serpent, that the serpent would bruise his heel, but the seed of the woman would crush his head. Jesus had a plan back then. Today, we fight a foe who's already been defeated. There's nothing that overcomes the blood of Jesus. You may go through trials, difficulties, you go through spiritual attacks, but you push through. You say that the enemy is underneath my feet and the anointing of God has broken his yoke. That my family, my children's children, they shall know God. They shall love God. They shall serve God. They shall be underneath the presence and the anointing of God until he comes. The next generation of the clan, this church will be blessed. They will carry the anointing of God in the presence of God in them. He is our sacrifice. I spent more than 18 years of my life believing that, you know something, if I could do some good works, I could go to heaven. I really believed in the scale of judgment system, but if I took my good things in the right and the bad and the left, and somehow the, the good outweigh the bad, I go to heaven. 
I believe I wasn't bad enough to go to hell. And I started to read the word of God and see how holy God was. I started to see how spotless he was and how not even one inkling of sin could dwell in his presence. And I began to be fearful. And that fear taught, taught me to search out the word of God. And as I was searching, like I said, those young college students from Nyack came with the word. Forty years later, I'm speaking to Jesus. Forty years later, I'm declaring his glory. But a believer says, I'm 18 years old. God's fire keeps growing. God's anointing keeps flowing. God's spirit keeps moving. God keeps mobilizing. It doesn't matter how old you are, how your hair is gray, or if you're younger, it is the spirit of God that begins to move in you, and you begin to move mountains. You begin to go and take back this generation. You begin to release the kingdom of God wherever you go, in your workplace, in your home, in your relatives, over your family. You begin to move in the power and the anointing of Christ Jesus. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, there's an inheritance that is in him that will be released as you continue to trust in his word so he is our high priest Hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 to 15 that he is going to be our high priest and, and he is going to be our perfect sacrifice in Hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 it says but Christ Jesus came as a high priest of good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the holy, entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies from the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit cleanse, eternal spirit offered it himself without spot to God, cleanse your consciousness from dead works to serve the living God. You have been cleansed. You have been washed. His blood says that there is no longer any sin in you. We may fall down, but we get up, but that is not our nature. God has changed our nature. When we receive Jesus Christ, I see so many people say we're just a sinner. We're just a sinner. Say that. No, we're not just sinners. We're not just, that's not our nature anymore. We may fall down, we get up, but we are not sinners. We are saying, saved by grace through Christ Jesus. We have anointing of the Holy Spirit in us. We are no longer sinners, but we're saying, saved by grace in Jesus Christ. Sin is not our calling. Sin is not our destiny. Sin will not rule over us, but the Spirit of God will move in us. We will step on cursed ground and make it blessed. We will go into the territories that men desire not to go, and we will bring the healing word of God. We will bring the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We will break generational curses. We will tear down bondages. We will destroy fear by releasing his kingdom, his glory, his power, and his anointing all over this earth, all over this north northeast region, all over this northeast region in Rutherford, in the northeast area, which they say is the graveyard of curses. I say these dry bones, they shall live, they shall live, they shall live. Dry bones in this nation, in this northeast area shall live once again because of the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. He is the mediator of a new Everlasting covenant. He is our perfect sacrifice. He was without sin. And the last thing the Lord showed me, he overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil. Here to say, today the enemy has no authority, no power, nothing he can do if you are in Jesus Christ, you will trample on his head. You will live with anointing and power and authority. You will begin to break generational curses that have been in your home that says, you know something, I know some people says, no something, alcoholism is a disease that's been passed down. My, my grandfather drank, I, I, I drank, and my son is going to drink. No, 
No, we don't receive that lie. We don't receive that curse from the enemy. We don't receive that curse. Our generations will be blessed because we have Jesus. Our generations will be blessed because we have Christ Jesus. All the past failures, all the past things in your life and your family line that says you were no good enough, you were not good enough, that you were destined to be poor, you were destined to be filled with iniquity. Those things have been broken by the blood, by the power, by the anointing of Christ Jesus. Every generational curse, everything that people said you had a ceiling, there's no limit with God. You can go higher and higher and higher. You can be anointed with a spirit every day. You can cast out demons. You can tear down walls. You can break strongholds. You can declare the name of Jesus over the lame and they'll walk and the blind will see and the deaf will hear because he's still the same today, yesterday, and forever and forever and forever and forever. He is the same God that you serve and he is mighty and strong and powerful and anointed with power. He is our high priest. He is my peace. He is my peace in the midst of the storm. He is my peace in trials. He is my peace in difficulties. He is my life. I've learned that I could live without so many other things, but I can't live without my Jesus. Can't live without my Jesus. I can't speak the word without my Jesus. I can't live in this world without the, the anointing of God flowing through my life. That yet you may say you are timid. He'll make you bold. You may say you are weak. He will make you strong. You may say that I don't have any theological precepts. He will give you the word what to say. As I remember so many times as a Nyack, the Nyack students came down and they were getting ready to come and because I went to a Catholic school, the Lord kept repeating to me in my mind, if you, see, if you seek me, you will find me. Two minutes later, they came and said, we're having a Bible study because God is faithful to his word. I'm here to say I want this day, today, this word to encourage you to know that you're not like normal people in this world. You can't blend into this system. You can't blend into this world system that desires that you be cookie cutter. You're a new creation. You have life in you that overcomes death. You have an anointing in you that breaks oppression, depression, and fear. You have an anointing in you that will make you strong and powerful, that you will break down every wall and barrier that prevents people from receiving Jesus. You have an anointing in you that God places in you that will allow you to move with power and authority. Doesn't matter how old you may be, doesn't matter how young you may be, you still serve a living God. You still have power and anointing and authority. It says in the word of God, blessed are you young men because you are strong and you have overcome the evil one. The young men overcome the evil one. Father, blessed are us who are older. We will grow in wisdom and knowledge and in truth as we grow older, as we stay with the kingdom of God. Father, you breathe, dry, you breathe life into our dry bones and you make us, Father, a generation of kings and priests underneath the covenant that comes from Christ Jesus. You make us bold and anointed. You make us filled with truth and wisdom. You make us overflow in loving kindness and tender mercies. You let us grow, Father, every day. As we grow, we grow, we grow like a seed that was planted in the ground that yields its fruit in season. In Psalm chapter 1, we will be like trees planted near rivers of living water, and we will produce fruit that is life, that is life, fruit that is life, fruit that is life being produced in us every day because of the Word of God dwelling in us richly. No. We have a mediator. We have a king, and that we have his peace. We used to live when I was younger in a lot of anxiety, thinking about what I can do, what can't I do. And I always mention this because I came to a small church, 
And I met Pastor the first day. And he began to pray with me. And he began to tell me the things that I've been struggling with in my life. He began to tell me the calling that was on my life. And I began to become desperate to say, you know something? I can't hold on to this fear. I can't hold on to this doubt. God has a plan for me. God has a destiny for my life. I must follow him. I must follow his calling. I must follow his desires. I must bow to my king and worship him every day in spirit and truth. And I must love him with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, and all my strength. It's been almost 17 years later. God has shown himself to be faithful. That he did exactly what he said he would do. That he would use me. That he would anoint me. That he would fill me with truth. And though I may grow older, and one day my hair grow white, and I will see myself, I was telling the Lord, maybe in my 80s, I'll still be preaching the gospel. <laughs> I'll be 80 years old preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I won't be having a walk or a cane, but I'll still be preaching the gospel. As long as there's breath in my lungs and there's strength in my body, I will declare the name of Jesus. I will declare the name of his kingdom. I will tell people in the highways, in the byways, about the saving power of the blood, about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, about how he takes weak things and makes them strong. He makes the broken whole. He makes the poor rich. He makes the weak strong. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the bright, bright morning star. He is the lily of the valley that has made us new. He is our peace. We don't have to look any further. He is our peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we're going to celebrate communion. I just, I just thank the Lord for just allowing me just to trust Him, you know, just to trust Him.
I like to begin reading for you from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. It says, For I have received from the Lord that which I delivered also, that this, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, that he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for, in remembrance of me. So let us partake in the symbol of the blood of the, of the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us, that we are made whole. His body is broken, that we are made whole, whole in his name. And in verse number 25, he said, in the same manner, he also took the cup. After supper, seeing this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us partake in the symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ that has washed us from every sin, that has destroyed iniquity, that has made us a new creation, that we now are sons and daughters, that we can come boldly in the throne of grace and find grace and mercy in our time of need, that your blood has cleansed us and washed us and purified us and made us clean. Let us partake in the symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're just going to worship. I'm going to do just one more song before we go home. It's just been an honor and a blessing to, to release God's word to you. And I say this, take this word with you throughout the week, knowing who you are, because the world often tries to frame our identity, but our identity has to be framed by who Christ Jesus says we are. It's not about what the world says we are. It's about who he says we are. And that's what we can live in, we can thrive in, and we can be salt and light in the world that has somehow lost its way. That we are the light of Christ Jesus. Oh, I forgot to take the offering. <laughs> so we're going to take the offering first, and we're going to do one song, and we're going to go home. And you're going to be blessed. Amen.
Father God, I just like to thank you for the word that you gave this morning. I thank you for the gifting of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that you are not a respecter of men, but you pour out your spirit and measure to those who come before you with humility and with love. Father, I pray that as your people go and leave this house this morning, they will be encouraged. They will be strengthened that their born again spirit would grow greater, deeper, wider in the knowledge of your kingdom, and that they would know of your great love. So Father, as we go throughout this week, never forget, never let us forget that Jesus is our high priest. He is our intercessor. He is our life and our strength. So Father, I pray you bless this day, bless this week, and bless your people, that they may know you, the true and living God. In your name I pray, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. His name is Jesus. In your name we pray, Father. Amen.